What is up guys, Achu here, bringing you another review on My Hero Academia. This episode is probably one of the more uh, lamer episodes, honestly. Uh, it was enjoyable, I will say that uh, it was really just kind of letting us see where everyone stands at. And it's been a good minute since we've been able to see everyone being involved. But towards the end of the episode, I will say that it was kind of... Uh, a realization as to what everyone was really feeling but before I get into everything I do want to say I do enjoy how we got to see like this mansion like student housing that it's really cool I mean I think it was, it was a really cool design it's a really cool concept but also uh, I do think that the principal's idea to flush out the traitor or to find out who it could be really is narrowing it down and seeing that this plan is being put into action really makes sense. I mean, it's not just the teachers that are being suspected of possible treason, but also the students. Uh, and as far as I know, and from what little I'm trying to find out about the manga, it could, it's seeming that it is a student. So I'm just wondering who it could be, if it's either class A or class B. Uh, but We'll see how things go in that regard. But also, I did I hate seeing the fact that Izuku's mom is probably going to be missing for a, long, for a long time. We saw All Might in the beginning of the episode as well. Him being, I guess, kind of uh, seen as a skeleton now by civilians. Uh, must probably, probably hurts his pride. But we also see that Eraserhead said that because of everyone's behavior and the way they were acting, Everyone could have been expelled except for Bakugo, uh, the Invisible Girl, and I forgot who else it was. But it's it sucks because it's like everyone knew to a certain extent what they were trying to do. And that's really the reason why there was this weird air throughout the episode with some of the characters. Um, but I also did enjoy how... Uh, at least one of the main people in this episode, Ashido, really tried to clear the air by performing this room king, uh, or whoever, oh well, that's what they call it, but the one who basically had the best design for a room. And I think throughout the episode, seeing the different styles of everyone was really kind of helpful to know where they're at, at least when it comes to comfort, comfort excuse me. And personally, I, I'm going to say that I, I did like uh, Todoroki's style room. Uh, it was funny to see Aya Rozo, the Invisible Girl, and you know, Mina just kind of fangirling over him. I, saying that he was the most handsome guy. I thought that was kind of funny to see how he was nonchalant about it. Saying, you know, I worked hard to make this room look like that. Uh, of course, he's being that cool-headed guy again that we we haven't seen in a while. He's been more, mostly uptight, yeah, for obvious reasons. But I think the funniest entry of them all was probably uh, Deku's having All Might all around, especially after everything that's happened. But after the boys have gone through and seen their uh, all, all the rooms have been exposed, Mineta was the most annoying character once again. I have not. I haven't had an issue with him because he hasn't been in the picture. But this guy, once again, wanted to, like, put his point out there and basically say that, you know, it's not fair that the girls are the ones that, you know, are always judging. Now it's our turn and we see the girls' room. I think, and I, now I'm being completely biased and honestly, I'm, I'm not going to deny it. But I did like, I, did, I really did like Gaia Rose's room. Um, yeah, she's the rich girl, but she's also the one of the most purest of them all, and I did enjoy the way her room looked. Um, one of the surprising things that I didn't think I would like was Jiro's room. Her room was really, really cool, so I, I, I'm not an instrumental person, but I do like music, so it was really cool to see. But towards the end of the episode, like I was saying, we kind of see where the emotions are in this episode. And we see how uh, Suyu was really just sad and didn't wasn't feeling good. I thought it was because she was trying to hide something. But it makes more sense as to what she was truly feeling. And it was guilt. It was, 
it was her feeling upset about uh, the the fact that five of her closest friends were basically kind of I want to say not traitors per se but they were kind of acting upon themselves and it, it hurt their hurt pride as well as a lot of people and so they were trying to make the best of it and trying to move on now the reason why I have both of them here is because they're pure and seeing them both cry really was just uh, it really messed with me it really did and they're really alike in a lot of ways uh, but honestly it was it was it was something that had to be you know dealt with you know all these feelings about the situation with Baku and everything but like I said overall it was a good episode it wasn't all that new uh, but it was enjoyable to say the least but guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and as always guys stay safe and I will catch you later. Call me on the cell phone.